We also have access to the digital tools and resources that come with our course book. So for example, here I've, ha uh, I've logged into the Pearson English portal and this is my dashboard so I can see all of the digital tools and resources that I have access to because I have the course books. So I'm going to go down to the presentation tool, which is the digital version of the course book that I want to use in class. And I can see all of the units laid out, so I'm going to choose my unit. Then I'm going to choose my lesson and I'm going to click on teach. And here I can see a page view of the entire lesson. Uh, and so I can also show each activity or each exercise one by one. But actually, first of all, in this particular lesson, I want to start by engaging my students. So I'm going to personalize it and I'm going to bring up the chat box. Uh, and I'm going to ask students to tell me, because the lesson is about good and bad days, they're going to tell me what the highlight of their day is. So what was the best thing that happened to you today? What's the most interesting thing that happened to you today? So they each type a sentence, sentence or two in the chat box. And from there, I can nominate students to expand what they said in the chat box to say a little more or to ask each other a few questions in open class. So that's a way of engaging learners because it's personalized and hopefully it will activate uh, their knowledge of the topic. It'll get them thinking about the topic and they can use some language previously learned as well. Now I'm going to share my screen. I'm also going to share my audio here. And I'm going to bring up my digital tool for my course book. And I'm going to click on uh, the exercise that we want to do next. So uh, this is still an engage task. I'm going to go to full screen and I'm going to ask students to look at the pictures and to tell me, probably easiest to tell me which two, uh, so they need to type the letter, which two are having a good day. And they type their letters into the chat box, which I can see here. And so I can assess that they've understood which ones are having a good day, which ones aren't. I might extend that a little bit further. So I might actually ask students to uh, choose a picture and they have to then type in the chat box or we could, I could nominate a few students to do it orally depending on the size of the class. But I could ask students to just type a sentence to say what happened to them. So for example, I'm one of the pictures, uh, I'm one of the people in the pictures. Um, well, I've been at home for days and days and days and I haven't seen anybody. Everyone's busy so I can't uh, message them. Uh, I've seen everything on Netflix. I've seen uh, all films on the TV. I've read all the books in the house. Oh, it's not a good day today. And I can get students to then type in the chat which picture I'm talking about. And then students can type in the chat box uh, their sentence or two. And then I can ask students to say orally who they think each person is talking about. So that's another way of extending that particular activity. Now I'm going back to page view and now we're going to go to the study phase. So here students are going to match the adjectives to the photos and they're going to use their ebooks to do that. And uh, once they've done that, we can, of course, check answers so we can show the answers here. And so on. And there's more than one answer. Uh, and we can, I would nominate, I think, with this particular activity, I would probably say, right, picture A, and I would nominate two or three students to tell me what they think for picture A before I confirm what I think as well. So again, varying feedback, doing it in different ways. Um, I can also, of course, go to my whiteboard. So once we've looked at this, I can actually go to my whiteboard and to record the vocabulary. But actually here, there are some teaching tools where we can draw. So we can now mark the stress of individual words. And we could do some pronunciation. So we can ask students to pronounce individually the words to uh, make sure that they're producing them with the right sounds and the right word stress. So I'm going to click on this to get rid of my teaching tools. Okay, then 
we're going to uh, move into some controlled practice. And, uh, so this is part of the study uh, stage of the lesson. And here students are going to choose the correct alternatives. So I could do the first one, I could elicit the first one as a class. So can everyone type into the chat box uh, what they think the answer to number one is? And I can then uh, check the answer and it's, uh oh, it's not right. So I can actually, let's clear that. So I can actually show the answer or show the answer for that one. And the answer is nervous, so I got that wrong. So we can do the first one as a demonstration, give students time to go away and do these alternatives on their own using their book. And then I can come back. And again, I can ask students to, um, I think I accidentally typed show answer there. So uh, we can check the answers together as a class. So I can nominate students to give me their answers, or I could ask students to type in the chat box, but I think that gets a little bit time consuming. Okay. And we can go to the next set of ex uh, questions in the exercise there as well. Then we have here, uh, here, again, this is more control practice, really. Students are going to work in pairs and think about how they would feel in these situations. So they are just, it's sort of semi-controlled. They're producing the words, they're matching the words, but they're not producing the adjectives in, in, in sort of a, a longer sentence about themselves, for example. But here I'm going to use the breakout rooms. So students are going to go into pairs and they're going to do this task. Uh, and I'm going to drop in and monitor them uh, each pair as much as I can and I might notice some of their pronunciation regarding the adjectives, something like that. Then in whole class I can nominate students to give some answers to each one. So make sure that I cover all of the pairs where possible. The next step is still practice but now we're activating because here students are going to actually write a sentence describing a situation when they feel this way. So this is no longer um, control practice, this is students activating their language using what they've studied to do that. So hopefully they'll use the adjectives when they're talking about their situation but they're going to write a sentence for now. So here I will obviously do a demonstration. There is an example here given so that students understand what they have to do. And then uh, I'll give students time to go away and write their sentences. And they can, of course, contact me via the, sh the um, chat box if they want. They can actually uh, type in a message to me personally if they prefer, if they want to check something. Once they've finished doing this, I can then go to the next task which is actually students working in pairs. This is where I'm going to put students into the breakout rooms and they're going to guess which adjective their partner is describing. So they're going to read their sentences and guess the adjective. And then of course, I would encourage them to ask follow-up questions. And here I'm going to be monitoring their use of the language to make sure that they're describing situations that actually are related to the, uh, the adjective that they're describing to make sure that they've understood the adjectives and when they ask follow-up questions that they're, they're using those adjectives in the right way. Once that's finished, uh, I'm going to, while I'm monitoring, I'm going to note down any uh, errors or any good uses of the language that I notice. And then I'm going to go to my whiteboard and I'm going to clear this. I'm gonna type some of the sentences and I'm gonna ask students to uh, use the chat box to actually correct the errors. Or if it's pronunciation, I'm going to get them to do it orally. So that's the activate stage. Now, in order to uh, finish the ESAP uh, methodology, I'm going to do the practice stage. And here we've got some options. So if I go back to uh, my dashboard, on my Pearson English portal page. I'm going to show you uh, my English lab. So actually, if you have access to my English lab, this is where students can be doing some online practice at home to consolidate their understanding. And I can, of course, choose the relevant uh, book and I can uh, set my students' assignments so I can invite them to join a course. I can set them assignments so they can do, for example, um, 
If we go to unit two, they can do the exercises in vocabulary for feelings. Uh, and I might set them the listening to do as well, for example. And then I can look at the grey book to see how well they did in those activities. So I'm assessing their learning and that will inform future lessons. We can do feedback in the following lesson, of course. Also, if I go back to my presentation tool, we have some additional resources here. So if I click on resources rather than presentation tool, what uh, I have here in the students' book materials, in the back of the physical book, is the vocabulary bank. So if I can click on view, uh, and this can be downloaded as a PDF, I can send it to students, or students have access to it anyway in their ebook, but I can bring it up in the lesson and just show, can you please do this? So this is extending the vocabulary on feelings. They can do this at home as well. So in this video, I've shown you what a lesson might look like using the online teaching methodology, engage, study, activate and practice. I hope it's been useful.